Okay, next I'd like to discuss the classic transportation problem and the associated linear programming formulation. Let's assume that we've got three factories and we've got three warehouses. And we need to ship some stuff between these factories and these warehouses. Let's say that the supply at each factory is 100 units, 300 units, and 300 units for one, two, three, respectively. And the demand at the warehouses are 300 units, 200 units, and 200 units at warehouse ABC, respectively. Down here we've got the network diagram of the situation. We've got factory one, two, and three, warehouse A, B, and C. And you can see that we've got all the paths connected between the factories and the warehouses. Let's assume that we've also got some cost data. It costs $5 to ship a unit from factory one to A. Four dollars to go from one to B, three dollars to go from one to C, eight, four, three, and nine, seven, five, respectively, between two and three in A, B, and C. So what you can see from this diagram then is that we have nine paths, and that correlates then with the linear programming model where we have nine variables. The nine variables are going to be x one A, one B, one C, x two A, x two B, x two C x3a, x3b, x3c, and the definition of the variable, as we'll see in the next slide, is to represent the number of units to ship from the factories to the warehouses. So we have nine variables in total. Okay, so here at the top you see, again, the definition of variables, let x sub ij, we've got subscripted variables now, is equal to the number of units to ship from factory I to warehouse J, where I is A, B, and C, or sorry, I is 1, 2, and 3, and, and J is A, B, and C. Uh, our objective function is to minimize C, minimize cost. The cost function is $5 for each unit we ship from 1 to A, 5x1A, plus 4x1B, plus 3x1C, and so on for all nine variables. Okay, so I just didn't put the whole function here, but there's, there's uh, uh, nine variables in the cost function. As you can see, we've got uh, six constraints plus non-negativity. Non We're going to have a constraint for each supply from uh, the factory one, we've got 100 units. Factory two, we had 300 units. Factory three, we've got 300 units. And then the next three constraints are the demand this is the demand at A, warehouse A. This is the demand at B. This is the demand at C. So the constraints, what we can ship out of factory one is in the first row. X1A plus X1B plus X1C has to be less than or equal to what we have available, 100 units. And then we got factory two, 2A, 2B, 2C, less than or equal to 300. And then the sum for three, 3A, 3B, and 3C, less than or equal to 300. And then we've got uh, factory Factory A, or sorry, warehouse A, 1A, 2A, 3A, has to be equal to 300. 1B, 2B, 3B equal to 200. And 1C, 2C, 3C equal to 200. And of course, non-negativity of all the variables. It's impossible to ship a negative quantity, so we need non-negativity. And don't forget to put that in, into your uh, Excel sheets as well. Now, why did I put equality here instead of inequality? I could have put less than or equal to, but notice if they're all less than or equal to, and we're minimizing cost, we wouldn't ship anything. So you have to at least have three equalities. Okay, so notice I put the equality on what we have to ship out to the various uh, warehouses. In this case, it's a special case because the supply is equal to the demand. The sum of the uh, supply at the factories is exactly equal to the sum of what we've got going out to the warehouses. So in this problem, we could have placed equalities in all six constraints. Okay, It's a little less work for the computer if you do half equalities and half inequalities, however, like this. But we could make them all equalities. Well, what happens if supply is not equal to demand? What happens if supply is less? Well, whichever one is less, that's the ones that get the e equality constraints. And the one that's more gets the inequality constraints. So if supply is less than demand, the supply constraints would have the equality constraints, and the demand constraints would have the less than or equal to inequality constraints. And vice versa. 
if supply is higher than demand, then the demand constraints would be the equalities and the supply constraints would be the inequalities. 